School is back in session this week for our Marauders as orientations are abound. The first week of classes are upon us. We're going to dissect everything that happened this week with the football game. Plus talk about some other prep sports finally in action. And we're going to reveal our nominees for the first Marauder Player of the Week award. So without further ado, let's talk some prep athletics. Yorkie floater too strong. Rebound tapped around. The three to win the game. No good. And Brett survives. The Marauders have won their first sectional championship since 2014. In the air to right field. Going back. Unbelievable turnover. Jude Sargent. Here's Jude with nine. If eight with seven. Sargent scores! In the gun. They'll give it to Giles. Makes the first man miss. Into the end zone. Touchdown! Welcome to episode 122. Sponsored by all of the good friends who support us on Patreon for all of our updates. And, and Justin, there were a lot of updates in, in the football game this week, even for soccer as well. There was a lot, a lot of updates. Again, make sure you support us on Patreon. You know, you get all the updates right on your phone for only $2 a month. I want to shout out Eric Zabrowski, Frank Briamonti, and Susan Guasconi for supporting us so far. We had a lucky 13 who have subscribed to us. So make sure you sign up today by going to patreon.com slash state of the Marauders. As always, I am your host, Renato Rodriguez of the class of 2010, alongside the co-host of Talking Giants in the class of 2016, Justin Penning. Justin, it's football Sunday when we're recording this, so we got Giants football. <sighs> I hope my mood doesn't improve. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit worse from when I watched prep football on uh on Saturday <laughs> night. But but I will say, I mean, the, the constellation of the school year starting, and you know, football is always a sport that starts a little bit sooner than a lot of other sports. I know you covered a water polo victory. Yes. You covered yes. a soccer victory on Saturday did, before right? um the football game. So it's actually nice that other you know, other sports are back in session. We get to talk about them, and it's cool that those other sports talk uh, started out with the victory and we'll and we'll talk about that. But Renato, uh, what was the final score from Patterson, New Jersey on Saturday night? The final score from Patterson, New Jersey was the Paul Catholic 46 and the Martyrs 20. So let's let's dissect. Let's dissect everything that happened with this one. We'll start off with the scoring plays in this one. And it was, uh, I mean, Justin, this first quarter was one of the more fascinating first quarters I've seen in a long time. Starting off, the Paul Catholic gets the ball on offense. What did they do, Justin, first first drive? What did they do? What did they do? They get a touchdown. Three plays in. It's going to be Derek Zaman at quarterback. He's going to find a wide open Elijah Burris in stride. 69-yard touchdown. Get the Spartans the early Seven nothing lead. The Marauders turn the ball over on downs on their next possession. They got into the ball territory. They couldn't score, and then DePaul gets the ball. And as we've seen multiple times this year, Justin, they get the turnover and they get a touchdown. Nolan James, the Don Bosco transfer, he's in from two yards out to make it thirteen nothing. DePaul. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, man, 13 nothing's not a good start. But the Marauder offense, they were not behind their next drive. Speedy, Jalen Klein, 31-yard touchdown run to the house, 13-7 to Paul. It's a crazy first quarter. Back and forth we go. Desi Jones, the four-star commit, he would take a Zaman pass 55 yards to the house to make it 20-7 to Paul. But... 
the Marauders would come back on back-to-back possessions to end the first quarter, going into the second quarter. First, Tyler Bell would get in from 20 yards out to make it 20-14. to 14. Then Andres Perez, wide open. Touchdown, 65 yards on the seam route. Game is tied at 20. And the Marauders would have all the momentum you thought. But the Paul Catholic responds in the rest of the second half. Two back-to-back drives right before halftime. It's going to be Michael Knox, 10-yard touchdown pass from their examine. And then a botch punt by Aiden Lamb results in a Ryan Thomas 31-yard punt return right before the half to make it 33-20. to And boy, things would not look good for the Marauders going into the second half. It would continue as DePaul would score two more touchdowns in the fourth quarter to end this one. They're examined on a one-yard QB sneak. And then they're examined its final touchdown pass once again to Elijah Burris. You started with Elijah. You end with Elijah. 12-yard touchdown pass. Final score, 46-20 to DePaul. So, Renato, there are some positive things that I do want to talk about from this game, and it was mainly the offensive side of the ball and how this team did fight back. But at the end of the day, no another loss. And the Marauders have started 0-3. And I don't think anything that I'm going to say right now is anything that the coaching staff isn't telling the players. Being 0-3, this isn't St. Peter's prep football, right? Right. I, I don't think well, I don't know the last time that happened. Back, back from the from the stat books. So I, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, back from the stat time. books. I mean, we were talking last night. We said maybe it goes back to 2004, like NJ.com and those yeah, kind of things. I think that's like Max Preps, I think 04 is the latest it goes to. So you know, and never has there been like an oh there's been an 0 3 start in there somewhere, but never has there been an 0 3 start as we've known, really like you know, the mm-hmm. good decent foundation of St. Peter's prep football, modern day. St. Peter's Prep football. Um, So that's, I I think that message is being portrayed right now to the, to these players. And and I'm sure it's a, it's a fine line between like you want to motivate, but you don't, but you don't also want to put down because there's still a lot of games left on this schedule. Um, And unlike 2004, this is, I would say is the main difference. Unlike 2004 and back when we were going to school, Renato, uh, you don't have Bayonne on the schedule. You don't have Union City on the schedule where you can maybe go in there with a barn burner 49 to 49 to six and then be like, all right, well, we just got an easy victory and we can play right. some of our young guys. So that's the difference is that now you have the super ultra tough schedule and the super conference and you're going out of state to play these teams. And even when you come back in state, it doesn't necessarily get any easier. So um, that is the main difference, but still, um, being 0-3, this is very, very unfamiliar territory for a very prestigious program like St. Peter's Prep, um, and they're certainly in the thick of it. All right, so w- let's talk about what the turning point of the game was. We talked about them pretty much in the scoring plays. The Marauders, with those back-to-back touchdowns, Justin, they tied the game with five minutes left to go before half. They had a chance to get momentum, but the, the defense could not get stops First, the last, pretty much the last two drives of the first half resulted in touchdowns for the Paul Catholic. Yeah, I mean, I, so I just kind of start off with a very negative, and I'll go, I'll go to a little bit more positive. The team, and specifically the offense, fighting back after being down by yeah, that, that was a good battle time. back. Mm-hmm. That was great, and mm-hmm. we finally saw like the fast St. Peter's prep offense, the explosive St. Peter's prep offense between Klein, uh, Tyler Bell really made some nice throws. That Hassan Moore throw down the seam, this wasn't, you know, this didn't go oh, over yeah. a score. But Hassan Moore, I think he was in the slot. I don't know if it was a slot seam. wasn't really close to the sideline. It was kind of just like a streak down the field. Uh, I was on the field for this game, so it was tough for me to see like specific plays <laughs> and stuff like that, which we're not, we've de- we've debated about. Renato, you love the field. I hate Yeah, I, I, I love being on the field. field. I, I, I love being up high. I've watched so many football games from like a higher perspective where I could just see more of what's happening. Um, but Hassan Moore, man, like I, you know, it's funny. Our, our, our guy Jackson was, was with, was standing right next to me. Tyler Bell throws that ball up in the air to Hassan Moore. Now he's double covered. 
but I could just see where how the ball is in the air. I start cheering because I think that was like Tyler Bell's best play of the season so far. It was Hassan Moore's best play of the season. Mm-hmm. Double covered. Only Hassan Moore could catch that ball going up the seam. And I start cheering before the ball's even in Hassan Moore's hands. I'm like, yes, that is awesome. You know, because that's just really good football. That's football that we're used to seeing. So it's little signs like that. And then also the most important thing, they had an explosive play on that drive, and it ends up in their first score. And then they right. get the ball back. Defense got to stop. They get the ball back. And then, boom, it's Jalen Klein that kind of takes over. So um, it, that was really, really good stuff from the offense uh, towards the, you know, the latter part of that first half. Um, just unfortunate that similar to our first game of the season. I was going to say, yeah, similar to Yeah, yeah. Just we, we got to – I don't even want to – it's not even second-half adjustments. It's just going into the locker room. We got to come out with that same fire that we had, and it's just not – it's not happening right now. And certainly when you've allowed, you know, 30-some points your first game and then the last two games you've allowed 40 points, it's tough for any offense to – you know, kind right. of keep up with that. So let's talk about the offense. You know, you talked about Tyler Bell. You know, Tyler Bell, he, I know the, the stat line's going to say he didn't have a good game because he went eight for 20 passing. But Justin, but you, you mentioned to me off air, you know, he got pressured a lot in this game. He did a good job using his athleticism, you know, extending plays, making those nice throws to Hassan Moore, Andres Perez, the open open seam route. You know, the offense, I think they looked really good against this Paul Catholic defense. Yeah, I I, I agree. At, at times it did. And, you know, I, mm-hmm. I you know it's funny. So I texted my co-host Bobby Skinner last night. And I asked him, what? So there was a linebacker that we looked at at Ohio State a couple years ago, uh, it, Baron Browning. And I think you even see a little bit of uh, Shane Simon, right? Who goes yeah. to Ohio State right now? Yeah. You even see uh, Cody, you know, Simon, Cody Simon. Cody, Cody Simon, Simon, excuse me. You even see a, a Cody Simon play this position sometimes too. I haven't watched Ohio State in, in, in Ohio State's defense in a little bit, but I'm interested to see how they're using him. But Ohio State, they use this overhang linebacker where clearly he's a linebacker. He's not a slot corner, but he's like in between where an outside linebacker would be and where like a nickel corner would be. He's just, it's a, it's like he's overhanging by the line of scrimmage. And we saw it last week against St. Joe's Prep. They had that overhang linebacker. They were bringing that guy on a blitz, and he was almost untouched every single time that they brought him. DePaul, same thing this week. Number 11 on DePaul was that overhang linebacker. He would kind of, he they were a little bit more conservative, not bringing him in almost every single snap on a blitz. But when he did come in, he was untouched, whether it was a run play and he could maybe make a play in the backfield or whether it was a pass. And then Tyler Bell was feeling the brunt of it. Tyler Bell took 20 pass attempts, Renato. 23, to be exact. 23. Yeah. I think at least 10 of them, or maybe around 10, and around half. If Tyler Bell was holding the ball for longer than two seconds, he was he was winding up on his backside. Mm-hmm. That's just how the, the especially the last two weeks, this is just how it's gone. Uh, for this Marauder offense and trying to protect Tyler Bell. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know if it's anybody, if it's any specific performance on the offensive line. But I think it's just coaches are able to generate pressure right now on the defensive side of the ball. And we're not communicating up front. We're not getting the right calls. We're not sliding the protection or whether it's just a numbers game because Renato, you know that this prep offense is a spread offense. So odds are you're only going to have five or six guys in protection if you don't if if your running back is in there that's the sixth guy. But you have five offensive linemen up front. If you're sending six guys versus five blockers or seven guys versus six blockers, one guy is going to come free, right? Right. And mm-hmm. I think that's been the main issue the last two weeks. And Tyler Bell has really, really taken some big, big hits, and that needs to be avoided these next few weeks. But also, Justin, I know we talk about a lot about Tal Bell, but Jalen Klein, Speedy, he had a tremendous game. 13 yes. carries, 119 sure. yards and a touchdown. Average 9.2 yards a carry, Justin. 31-yard yeah. touchdown run as well. I mean, he, he's been the, 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 the dark horse for this Marauders offense. You know, he's he's the main guy in the backfield. He He's what uh, uh, Logan James is for, for DePaul. 
he he yeah. he was good. Yeah, and you know when running backs like Klein are their best is when you can get him past that initial push, and then you're one v one versus a linebacker, or you're one v one versus a safety, and Jalen Klein nine times out of ten is going to make that guy miss, and he's going to put more yards on the board. So again, you know, I, I like I don't want it to sound like I'm nitpicking the performance of the offensive line because I really don't know fully what's happened because you see him in the run game they're kind of working with each other well where Klein over the last two weeks has been efficient but the issue is is that when you look at the when you look at the box score and you see Klein only got 13 carries and he averaged nine yards a carry when you're down by two scores at the start of the game it kind of puts you not in a game neutral situation and then when you're losing by multiple scores in the second half it takes you out of that game neutral situation where we saw Jalen Klein do most of his damage when prep was in striking distance, when prep was within one touchdown, when they tied the game, and you know when when that game was tied, so that's when you saw him do most of his damage, and that's when you know he that's when this offense is at its best when you know you're playing either in that game neutral situation or you're playing with the lead. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's switch gears now, Justin. Let's talk. Let's talk about the defensive performance of the Marauders. And usually, you know, in the first two games, we saw a lot of explosive plays being given up by this Marauder defense. To the, in, in this game against the DePaul, they only gave up four explosive plays. Marauders have five explosive plays. So four explosive plays, nothing crazy, but they gave up a whopping 459 yards of total offense, yeah. including 271 yards passing, Justin. So that's not like... Like it's not the it's not the, it's not the mojo, you know. Usually they don't right. they don't like to give like explosive plays was was the downfall of the first two games, but now this week the Paul just pretty much ran it down the throats and passed got big got big completions as well. Yeah, yeah. And now how many of those? How many of the, oh so uh, so actually the first score of the game for DePaul was an explosive play touchdown, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And then they had another explosive play that looked like it was a touchdown. The yeah, then he was, he was he was down at the two. Yeah, he's down at the two. So I basically so I'm just gonna go out and say like De Paul wound mm-hmm. up score, scoring a touchdown. So even though Prep didn't allow a lot of explosive plays, they basically had two explosive plays that led to 14 points for De Paul. Yeah. That's the bad thing. Where you know I guess maybe the sheer number of them went down this week. The the trend of explosive plays are leading to six or seven points. That trend was still there. Um, and that's something that you need, you need to avoid. Um, and you know, and that, you know, those two plays leading to a 14 point swing for DePaul, that 14 point, you know, those 14 points are the main difference between, you know, that, that swing and that momentum swing that we talked about earlier, right. Where they had yeah. two scores and that kind of put DePaul on a good path in the se- in the second half. So, um, that's again, you just want to stuff that you want to avoid. It's it's kind of like week in, week out. It's the it's some of the mm-hmm. it's some of the same stuff. And you know, I, I wanna I wanna challenge these secondary players. It's you know, we we in terms of the big allowing big plays, you're kind of like the last line of defense in both the pass and the run. So taking better angles against the run and you know, this you know, having a, a deep safety or two deep safeties back there when teams are looking to throw deep and not just putting all the pressure on the cornerback. So uh, the secondary needs to kind of take on that mantra that we are the last line of defense. Um, and it just hasn't fully uh, added up uh, yet this year. So Owen three, Justin going next Saturday, Del Barton. It's going to be their home opener at Morristown. So that's going to be interesting to see how their students respond. But this is a rematch of last year's quarterfinal matchup, Justin. Ryan Trafford, and, and pretty much in the two matchups last year, went wide over this Marauder team. And, yeah. and he's back this year, Justin. So we, I don't know what's going to happen, but we might see more Ryan Trafford again. This I think we're going to see a lot of Ryan Trafford, both in the rushing game and, and the receiving game, because they like to throw him the ball too. Um, they're they're a fun team out there in Morristown. They were a really fun team last year. Um, they they fought hard, um, and I think they they lost both matchups last year, right? Even though they played no. like two good games. Well, no, they won, they won, they won, they won the, the quarterfinal, so they won. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that's right, that's right, because that was Prep's last game. So, um, you know, they they're now smelling blood in the water with that victory last year. So, um, I think that they're going to want to run it back again. 
You know, they were one on one to start out the year so far. They could have won two and no, but they had a tough loss last week in their matchup. So it's gonna be interesting, Justin. Again, 1 p.m. at Del Bar. And hopefully we get Dio Media to call the game. Hopefully you you and you and Kevin can call. I would like that. I would like that a lot. So so we'll we'll, we'll stay tuned for that. So there's other sports as you mentioned, Justin. We got we gotta talk about, right? So what let's talk about the news of the week. And the news of the week is going to be sponsored by our good friends at D1 Media Pro, the number one live stream in the state of New Jersey for high school sports. So the soccer team, they would win big in their opener. As they defeated Oratory Prep six to nothing, they have three goals in each half. But Justin, instead of me talking about the whole entire game, you know, I, I got a visual for you. So we had a live stream of the game. Myself, Ignacio Morrow on the call, Jackson B. Monte on camera. So let's take a look at. Some soccer highlights. Welcome in live to Caldera Field up in Summon, New Jersey, as the St. Peter's Prep Marauders open their 2023 season, taking on the Oratory Prep Rams. Sent back in the middle. What a Ball. shot! What and a goal! goal! Andy Mallorca, what a shot! What a goal there for Andy Mallorca. That's going to be at the Marauders' first of the season, and with 35-15 left to go. It is now one nothing Marauders. Wow, that had a lot of power on that. That ball was moving. This is what Oratory has to do, in my opinion. Just play it back. They just keep going forward, 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 and then they can't build because they'll just turn it over. It's a great move. As Mayorga keeps it in the middle. Nice great touch there great to Casanzo. Casanzo goes to his right. Oh, nice two pass. pass. Papowski in front, one on one. Score! Oh. Great movement by Prep. Love that shot. Great feed there by Consanzo to get it to Roman Papowski, his first of the season, and it's 2 0 Marauders. Yeah, Is he Cole able to get it? In the box, Patino. There's a chance. Patino. Oh. Oh, is that a penalty? penalty yes, kick. it is. It's going to be a penalty kick for the Marauders. I mean, Bertino yeah. Bertino from the spot. Here he goes. Bertino scores. Oh, that was a nice shot. High top left. And the Marauders just continue to. Eat this oratory defense alive. To Mayorga. Mayorga. One on one. Mayorga goes to his left. Mayorga or speed. Mayorga in the box. Loose ball. Scores! Matt Sobrero gets his first of the 2023 season. It's all Marauders in this one. It is now four in another. Another great play by the Marauders just to get in that box. And like, what did I say earlier? Crash those posts. There'll be some redirects, and Sobero jumped on that. Great Sobero. play. Sobero. Scores! What a shot by Matt Sobero. He gets his second of the contest, and it's now 5 nothing. Wow, what a shot there. Power and accuracy. What a shot. Plays it forward. Botino with the ball on the other sidelines. Going to boot it up. Wow, what a play. No one's off sides here. We got another opportunity. Loose ball. Loose ball. It's going to. It's in. Wow, what a touch there. What a touch there for Philip Saluro. He's going to get the sixth goal for the Marauders. And it, it, it's just all St. Peter's prep right now here with 13 minutes left to go. That is 6 a, nothing. That is a ridiculous touch. There we go. Thank you for tuning in to this week's uh, match. It's the St. Peter's Prep Marauders versus the Oratory Prep Rams. So the final score here from Summit, New Jersey, St. Peter's Prep 6, Oratory Prep 0. So that was a big win, Justin. 6 nothing. What, what a way to start off the, the 2023 season for this Marauder team who have high expectations. So, you know, they got to the South Non-Public A final last year. They're going to try to repeat that again. And, boy, that was a big win. That was huge. Offensive firepower. That's that's yeah. the main thing that I saw, like chemistry, and even though Oratory Prep had a game under their belts already, uh, that was the they first did. game for the Marauders on the road, and the fact that they had that offensive firepower with passing the ball, moving the ball like that, very impressive. Good for them. 
We have a very impressive win to start off for the Soccer Marauders. Now, Justin, we got to talk about the water polo team. You know, they also had a big win. They destroyed Riverdale by a score of 19 to 7. Nine, yeah, you heard, you heard that right. 19 to 7. We had Mike Florentino with six goals, Nick Valenti with four, Ben Lucas with four, Alp Ayata with two, Jonah Briggs with two, and Evan Murkoff having 10 saves in net for the Murders. Again, both teams, Justin, Sock and Wild Paul team, both with, with big, big victories in their opening games. That's what you want. Start off the year with an exclamation point. Set yourself up for some momentum and go forward. I love it. Also, Cross Country gets their first me, and they get the victory as well. Yeah, Cross Country, the track team, always doing, you know, great things year in, year round. They were led by Aiden Prucher in the boys' 5K Cross Country varsity run. He would end up in fourth place. Cheyenne Hurley ends up in fifth. Ivan Rocks in 6th, Tommy O'Brien in 7th, Liam Rocks in 12th, and Abraham went in 13th to round out the order for the Marauders. And again, Justin, they won by a whopping 103 points. So, let's go. Let's go. Clap it up for the cross-country team. Clap it up. Let's go. All right. So, in other news of the week, what 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 else do we got to talk about? What else do we got to talk about? I think that there's some, some beefsteak dinner still, right? Oh, yeah. We, we, we got, you know, the baseball team. They're going to get their, their golf outing as they're going to go once again to the Hendricks Field Club out in Belleville, New Jersey. Again, that's October 16th. So make sure, if you're going to sign up for that, submit your payment to Joseph Haynes at the information below. The wrestling team, they're going to be honoring their 50th year with a beefsteak dinner. Again, that's going to be on November 11th from the O'Keefe Commons. That's going to be between 6 10 p.m., $75. And again, make sure you sign up at their Eventbrite link. You can find it on their social media profile. At SPP Wrestling. Also with beefsteak dinners, you got the soccer team getting their first annual beefsteak dinner. That's going to be on September 30th, 2023. So that, that's coming right up. So make sure you say that on your calendars and make sure you contact the soccer team at SPP underscore soccer for that information. So, Justin. That's all the news for the week, but we got a loaded, and I mean loaded, schedule on top. You know, we got first full week of action. Take a look at what's on the docket for this week. You got soccer taking on Memorial. We'll have d Media Pro providing live coverage of that one. That's a 7.30 start today against Memorial. On Wednesday, the water polo team will travel out to Riverdale in New York City for a 4.30 p.m. matchup there. Soccer taking on Carney. That's a big matchup. Again, I think Kevin Connolly be on the call for that one myself. 7.30 p.m. start. On Friday, you got cross-country action at the Bound Ocean Park. Soccer taking on Robbinsville. And then cross-country, St. Dominic Academy Invitational. And then football team on Saturday would take on Del Barton, as we mentioned. 1 p.m. start at Del Barton. So, Justin... It looks like we're getting, we're getting some 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 full action finally. I, I'm excited to, to get some some more more games to cover. School's back. We're officially we're back. not on on Monday, the day that this comes out. Yes, back. we're back. So everybody's back in Jersey City. Uh, we're filing we're we're filing in and piling in the halls. So we got our our full slate of fall sports back. I love it. And you know what that means that we got full full, full slate. Just you know what that means. What does it mean? It's time. For the Marauder Player of the Week Award. Yes. Yeah. We got four nominees to start off the 2023 season. 
And first one, you know, a little bit of a surprise because, you know, he had a goal and assist in this one. But he's a freshman. It was his first game. A goal and assist. Philip Sayewell from the soccer team. So he's going to get the nomination. I could have got Matt Sabero that one, but I, I wanted to get the freshman a little bit of yeah. love. So, so Philip Sayewell, our first nomination. Our second nomination from the cross-country team. You know, had the fourth place finish overall. Aiden Prucher, he's always done a great job for track all year round. The third nominee, as we talked about for the football team, Jalen Klein, again, he had 113 yards on the ground and the touchdown. And last but not least, from the water polo team, with his first varsity action, Ben Lucas gained four goals in that matchup as well. So four great nominations. Voting is going to end on Saturday, September 16th at 11.59 p.m. So make sure you vote on the app today. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for another episode of the State of Mars Podcast. Again, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I want to thank, of course, my glorious co-host, Justin Pennick, co-host Talking Giants. Do you, do you have a prediction for the Giants? Just I, I want to see if we could get, get a reaction from this. I just I just don't want to be in pain Monday. <laughs> you don't care as long as the Giants win. As long as the Giants win. I I, I, I I don't want to be in pain. My Nebraska <laughs> Cornhuskers loss, St. Peter's Pro football loss. Let's not go three for three. So let's not go three for three. Uh, listen, we got the Giants as we're recording this on Sunday. We got my Jets. I got more of my Jets shirt right now. Oh, on Monday night. We got the Jets Monday night. So I want to see. I'm put the hot take. I want to see a Giants and Jets victory. So that'd the be year. great. Giants and Jets victory start off the year. So, as always, I am your host, Ron Rodriguez of the class of 2010, alongside my co-host, Justin Pennick of the class of 2016. And as always, let's go prep. B-I-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E-B-E